Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech and iOS 13.1 Beta 2 has been out for a few days. I've been running it on my 10s Max, as well as a few other devices as well, including an iPad Air 2. And I wanted to talk about how it's been for me then we'll talk about how it's been for you based off the YouTube community poll. And then we'll take a look at some of the issues you've had and things you have to say in the community comment section as well. So let's talk about first the event that's coming up in a few days on Tuesday, we'll see the next iPhones. We should also see iOS 13 GM. So we're not sure yet if we'll have to actually downgrade from 13.1 to that, or they'll make it easier for us beta testers to get on the final version of iOS 13. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But right now, that's when we'll see it a few hours after that event on Tuesday, which is at 1 p.m. Eastern time or 10 a.m. Pacific time. So let's talk about how this has been on my device, though. So the first thing is the LTE issue that I was having is still here, although it's less severe and happens less often. So, for example, if I leave my home drop off of Wi-Fi, jump over to LTE. Sometimes I have data, other times I don't. Now it was consistent on beta one, it's been better on beta two, but it's still an issue. For some reason it's an issue only on this particular phone. On other phones I don't seem to have that issue, other phones not running this version of the beta. So there's definitely something going on there. Now if you have an older phone with a Qualcomm modem, it doesn't seem that you have this issue. Also notifications, when I get notifications for Instagram or YouTube comments, things like that, they're not showing up regularly on my lock screen. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. So I've noticed that that's been an issue for quite some time. Also, one of the things they've fixed, it seems to show up now, is whether on the home screen is fixed. So if you're using the do not disturb feature and you go to bed, and you're using that feature, you go to bed, wake up in the morning, it will not only say good morning, but it will also show the weather again. Let me show you. So this is what it would look like when you wake up, it would say good morning, give you your weather, depending on your country. This is from outside of the United States. Someone sent that to me and I apologize. I didn't write down your name, but thank you for sending that to me. I really appreciate it. And so that's back. Also optimized battery charging. It now has a notification. And here's one someone sent me as well. And you'll see it says scheduled to finish charging by 7.30 a.m. So it will charge up to 80%. And then before it hits 7.30 a.m., it will finish charging. So that's something that is, while it's been in here, it just seems to be showing us a notification. I haven't seen that before. Maybe you have, but I haven't seen it. Now, as far as performance is concerned, I've had no issues with this beta. In fact, everything's smooth as far as scrolling and whatever you're in seems to be nice and smooth and apps are launching fast. In fact, I've had zero app crashes, not one since I've been using this. None of my apps are crashing whatsoever. Also Ram management is a little bit weird. It depends on the app. It seems so if I'm using YouTube, YouTube seems to reload a lot, regardless of how many apps I have open in the background. If I have three or four, they usually will reload. So, Apple needs to work on that a little bit. I, I suspect they'll have that fixed by iOS 13 and then probably iOS 13.1 when that comes out. Now, as far as battery life for me, let's take a look at it. I actually haven't looked at this in two days, so let's take a look and see what it's at. This device is at 100% battery health. It's about four months old, so that will go down soon but you'll see my battery life has not been amazing. Three hours and 46 minutes, four hours and 12 minutes, and that's with about 20 to 30% battery life left. Uh, it depends on the day, but uh, normally I said six and a half hours is great. For me, it's five to six right now. For some of you, it's been really, really good. In fact, about half of you, based on the comments, have said that this beta is amazing about the other half of you have said it's been terrible. Now that's not reflected in the actual poll that I ran and I'll show you that in a moment, but it seems to be something that's a little bit hit or miss. Also, as far as battery life, it's about half and half again. Some people say they're having amazing battery life over seven hours for some people. As far as screen on time goes, it just depends on the person, what apps they're running and what's actually going on in the background. Now, quite a few people are still having issues with the mail app. And at first I actually did have quite a few issues, everything from it not grabbing the mail properly, having issues with the accounts, but now it seems to be working fine after a couple of days. Many people are still having issues with this mail app though, whether that be crashing or something else. So for some reason, it's still a bit of a problem. 
Now, one of the good things is, is if you have an Apple watch, all but one person in the comments from the poll that we'll take a look at in a moment, all but one person said they were not having good battery life with the Apple watch. So Apple watch battery life is back to normal for most people. So that's a great thing. So if you're using your Apple watch with it, I don't have mine on right now, but if you're using an Apple watch with your phone, battery should be much better. And then two more things I got from the community poll comments is CarPlay is still pretty buggy for a lot of people, especially when using Siri. And then also Fortnite isn't working for most people, it seems. So if you play that game, you may want to downgrade. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll. So the YouTube community poll had 9.6 K votes, 9,600 people voted. So I really appreciate that. That's a great amount of people to get feedback on. And there's 250 comments, which is pretty incredible. It took me quite some time to read through every one of those, but I did go through them all. Now, as you can see here, 37% 30 said it was great. Only 3% said it was terrible. 15% said it's okay, but some bugs, 35% of you are using 12.4.1 or older and 10% of you are using Android. So that's a pretty good idea of how it's going. It's quite good compared to the previous one. I think the previous was about 5% that said it was terrible. So let's take a look at 10 or so comments. We'll just go through these and see what they have to say. Now I've sorted these from oldest first. There we go that's how I went through them and you'll see we'll go through and see if we can find some different devices as well and see how they've done improved LTE connectivity performance is good not much of a difference from 13.1 beta 1 battery life is far better from 13.1 beta 1 on an iPhone SE what a difference between beta 1 and 2 for me on my 10s max everything works good even cellular and Wi-Fi working very well for me on my iPhone 10s and my 2018 iPad Pro very little in the way of bugs and the battery drain issue on my Apple watch seems to be resolved working well on my iPhone 8 plus battery life Life is good so far and they fixed the Apple Watch battery drain bug satisfied so far using on my iPhone 10 it's been a large improvement over beta 1 cellular issues have been completely dissipated even getting better signal than I usually do using it on my 6s nothing major to report the battery life is terrible other than that it's great with some glitches here and there would love to see some more UI changes such as the call UI and some weather widgets on the lock screen by the way, love your videos. Thank you for providing such quality content. Thank you. I appreciate that. Save battery charging does not work any longer on my 10. Besides that, it works pretty fine on my 10 and iPad Pro 10.5. iPhone SE and iPad 2018. It's great for me again. Finally, the three finger gesture works again. Procreate works great again iPhone 10s Max has been great so far, maybe some little bugs remaining in mail, but besides that, all is fine. I have Wi-Fi connection problem. It loses connection after a short time. Periodically, I need to close and open Wi-Fi. I feel that this is so unstable on iPhone 7 because it's that bug, or because of that bug. I'm wondering if they changed something that made it less compatible with certain routers. We don't really know that for sure, but here's someone with an iPhone seven that says no complaints, just waiting for the final release. 10 R mail still shows some blank emails occasionally and Siri through my car hardly ever works, has trouble with connection. Even when signal is strong iPhone 10 here, it's much better for me than beta one battery has been much better and performance as well. iOS 13.1 beta two is amazing on my iPhone 10 S max, very fast and no problems at all. I had zero issues with it whatsoever. And the battery on my iPhone 10 R is really great, but a few bugs to be fixed. 10s max and ipad pro 2018 great so far hopefully it stays that way on my ipad pro 11 inch there is a weird siri bug where if you're not talking it will put random stuff there can recreate on my iphone 10s max as well as over and over on both devices let's try it so it's not working there let's try with the keyboard Maybe you're picking something up in the background. I'm not sure, but I would love to see what you have to, what you're actually experiencing. I've been using iPad OS 13.1 beta two on my iPad pro 2018. No random respring's unlike the previous beta pro apps like affinity designer and luma fusion work just fine. Except when I'm trying to play Fortnite, it kicks me out every time when I'm in a match. 
And many people are saying iPad OS is great now, no issues with the folders or anything either. So I meant to, I actually meant to mention that earlier on. I've noticed CarPlay is still incredibly buggy, especially when using Siri. Battery life has dramatically improved from iOS 13.1 beta 1 to beta 2, getting about 7 to eight and a half hours on battery life, which is really great. Currently running on my iPhone 8 Plus 256 Space Gray with Qualcomm chipset. It's usually the Verizon version. Using on my iPhone XS Max seems great so far. I have an iPhone 7. The only problem I had was with the Chromecast video stream app was not supported on earlier betas. It works fine now. One of the interesting things about this is it actually still says you could have an issue with it. iPhone 7 Plus, battery health at 89%, about 6 hours of YouTube with max volume, similar if not slightly better with voice calls using hands-free. No bugs or freezes at this stage. It's been great on my Mini 4, not a device we see a whole lot. iPad Mini 5, lots of resprings and crashes. And then finally, iPhone XS Max. This version seems better, however, I have had some freezing here and there. Battery life on my watch is returned to normal with 13.1 Public Beta 2. When I was running 13.1 Public Beta 1, watch was dying midday. So that's it for all of the comments. I really appreciate all of you participating and taking the time to take a look at that and expect a new GM this week. And again, when we get the iOS 13 GM, I'll let you know how you can actually go back to that if you're on 13.1. I'm not really sure at this point. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.